to the show that introduces you to the best of the best in the world of fine epicure. Today on Vegetarian Elite, we present the amazing Tracy McGuerta, co-founder of blackvegetarians.org, the first comprehensive website for about a million and a half African-American vegetarians. Tracy is also a public health nutritionist, a dynamic speaker and author, and a glowing, vivacious vegan for over 20 years. Honestly, never thought that I would be a vegetarian, a vegan, a healthy eater, none of that. I never thought that I would be a public health nutritionist. Our black student union at Amherst brought Dick Gregory to campus to talk about the state of black America. And instead, he flipped the script on us and he decided to talk about the plate of black America. So he talked about how unhealthfully most black folks eat. He spent the next two and a half hours graphically tracing the path of a hamburger from a cow on a factory farm to a slaughterhouse to a fast food place to a clogged artery to a heart attack. And that was the first time I had ever heard anything like that in my life, linking um, diet to disease. That was the catalyst that started me um, researching to become a vegetarian. I'll be 43 this year. And uh, it took me about two years to become vegan after I became vegetarian. So I became vegetarian in 1986. Multifaceted Tracy went on to achieve her master's degree in public health nutrition from New York University. With her vegan-inspired physical energy and mental clarity, Tracy was the perfect person to be a public policy advocate. In 1999, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine filed and won a lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Agriculture about the fact that six out of ten of the members of their Dietary Guidelines Committee represented the meat and dairy industries. Tracy worked for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine as a nutrition policy advisor and helped create the strategy for this breakthrough in nutritional honesty. America's largest health support organization for African American women the Black Women's Health Imperative has also consulted Tracy about nutrition. Now, would you talk about the federally funded vegan nutrition program that you directed in Washington, D.C.? That is called the Eat Smart Program. And as you said, it was the first federally funded vegan nutrition program in the country. Merlene Vassell, who was then uh, vice president of the Vegetarian Society of D.C., came up with the idea. They hired me to develop the program and to direct it, to actually teach the classes. So um, it, was, it was very exciting because it was a free class and we could teach it anywhere in the city targeting low-income DC residents to teach them how and why to eat plant-based food. So it was nine weeks or 12 weeks long, once a week. Every other class we had a local chef come in and prepare a delicious vegan dish. And then we also had a, an exercise component as well. So it was very popular, still going on. In the middle of this year, Tracy had her first book published. It is considered the first vegan guide focused on transitioning the diet and health of African-American women. It contains 40 scrumptious and nutritious recipes with beautiful photographs, expert advice on how to change one's diet, and practical resources such as shopping lists. Readers, including esteemed medical doctors, have raved that it will change your life. Your book, By Any Greens Necessary, A Revolutionary Guide for Black Women Who Want to Eat Great, get healthy, lose weight, and look fat, seems to be a call to action. It definitely is a call to action. I targeted black women specifically in this book because while we are, of course, fabulous, we also have the worst health in the nation. 80% of us are overweight and 50% of us are obese. And we have the chronic health conditions that go with that. So the heart disease, the high cholesterol, the diabetes. One in four black women by the age of 55 um, are estimated to have um, diabetes. 
and also breast cancer, ovarian cancer, we have the highest rates in the nation. So we're in a health crisis. We need to be targeted, absolutely. Now, even though you directed your book to uh, African-American women, all women can benefit from reading your book. So now, how, how does the experience of reading the book connect to the rest of the family? Women in general are still the primary cooks in the family. So what we eat affects what our children eat, what our partners eat, even our extended family members when we have um, gatherings, family gatherings, and our friends and loved ones. Um, so we are the ones who can take back control over our family's health. You can be the one that makes the difference if you eat more plant-based foods. My mother became a vegan more than 20 years ago when she was in her 50s. Of her siblings who are surviving in their senior years, she is the only one who is healthy and free of chronic disease. So no arthritis, no overweight, no diabetes, no high blood pressure, cholesterol, no cancer. She exercises most days a week vigorously. So it's the exercise and the vegan diet, the healthy vegan diet, that changed that dynamic. Um, and most people think that DNA trumps diet, but in fact, diet trumps your DNA. Stay with us. We'll be back soon to hear more excellent advice from Tracy McGuerter, Master of Nutrition. We eat too much protein as meat and dairy eaters. We eat three to four times the amount that we should, which means that we're getting all that saturated fat and cholesterol also. So plant-based sources really are the healthiest. of African-Americans who are vegetarian. We have a long history of eating plant-based foods. In fact, we're pioneers in this plant-based food movement. Especially in D.C., we started, African-Americans started the first all-vegan establishments in the nation's capital. Welcome back to Vegetarian Elite here on Supreme Master Television. Bodybuilding champion Kenneth Williams, music legend Prince, civil rights leader Coretta Scott King, American Idol star Ruben Studdard, Pulitzer Prize winning author Alice Walker, music label pioneer Russell Simmons, and actors Keenan Ivory Wayans and Angela Bassett. Besides being African American, what do these following celebrities have in common? They are all champions of the plant-based diet. Inspired by this noble lineage of vegans and vegetarians, Tracy McGuerta founded BlackVegetarians.org. My middle sister Maria McCorder and I started that in 1999 for folks who were already vegetarian or seeking information about vegetarianism. And we did it because we were getting so many questions about what we eat, that people want recipes most of all. And so we have um, over 100 recipes on the site, and we have a why to become vegan, how to become vegan. We have resource lists, we have books, we have all types of information. So it's still like the number one resource for African-American vegetarians seeking support and inspiration. Now what's the most asked question from those that are new to the vegan lifestyle? Those where, people who seriously want to change. Where do you get your protein? The meat industry has us believing that protein equals meat, meat equals protein. Well, so let me just um, kind of dispel that myth right away. Meat is not the best source of protein because along with the animal protein, you get saturated fat and cholesterol. And saturated fat and cholesterol is what leads to heart disease, certain cancer, stroke, and diabetes, the top four killers in the country. The best place to get protein is from plant-based sources because they contain zero cholesterol, very little to no saturated fat. So that means ingredients um, like beans and nuts and whole grains especially, even 
fruits and vegetables have protein in very small amounts. So it is, it is almost impossible not to get enough protein on a healthy vegan diet. What advice do you have for those who want to make that change? Those people who want to mm -hmm. be healthier, lose weight, and as you say, <laughs> look fat. I understand that it can be difficult even though you have the information and you know you want to make the transition to eating more plant-based foods. So the first thing I recommend is that people get their half of their plate filled with dark leafy greens at least twice a day for lunch and dinner. So that means kale, collards, um, that means Swiss chard. If you're eating white rice, switch to brown rice or red rice or black rice or quinoa. Um, if you're eating white bread, switch to a whole grain bread. Our taste buds are naturally acclimated for wholesome plant-based foods. What happens is we get addicted to salt, fat, and sugar. That's the unholy trinity, as I call it, in the food industry. So the more plant-based foods we eat, the more our taste buds will get reacclimated to these natural tastes and will lose the craving for the processed meat and dairy-based foods that are filled with fat, salt, and sugar. It actually takes about three weeks to a month to get your taste buds acclimated. So it's pretty, it's pretty quick. And um, you know, the food is delicious. There's, there, at this stage, in, the, in this century, there should be no question that healthy food can be delicious. change your mind, your mouth will follow. So to me, it's all about having informed choices, understanding. People think that they have free choice now. They're making decisions about food based on um, their own personal decisions. When in fact, the number one reason that we eat what we eat is food advertising. More than $35 billion a year is spent on food advertising. It is by design that we choose the foods that we eat. More than 70% of that advertising is for processed food and junk food. Only 2% is for fresh fruits and vegetables. What I hope to do through the book and through the talks that I do is present information about why plant-based foods are healthiest. The information about plant-based foods being the healthiest foods available to eat is not disputed. It's been around, the science has been around for more than four decades it's just not widely promoted. And so I want people to have informed choices. Just two weeks ago, the United Nations issued their second report, and this time it was stronger than the first, where they are encouraging world citizens to eat more vegan foods, to eat fewer meat and dairy-based foods to save the planet. So it's not just about our personal health, which will obviously be improved if we eat more plant-based, but we'll save the planet if we do, because livestock production for meat and dairy causes more global warming, more climate change than all of the world's transportation combined. We're at a crisis situation with the planet and our, and our personal health. What my experience is that once people have the information, they start to make some changes immediately. And that's what it's all about. information on Tracy McGuirter, her book By Any Greens Necessary, and How to Improve Your Health can be found at www.byanygreensnecessary.com and blackvegetarians.org. Thank you, Ms. Tracy McGuirter, for remarkably progressing the great interest in optimum nutrition that is spreading like a wave over our planet. And to our viewers, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Coming up now is Between Master and Disciples. And there you have it. Go for it. Seek and ye shall find the super nutrients in fruits and vegetables. Your rewards will be great health, vitality, and new adventures in culinary delights. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash V-E.